guys, this review is actually a Patreon request from Gene Consbrook, so thanks for the contribution, Gene. Honestly, this is the nicest kind of Patreon request, because it's a request for an album that gets released within about a week or so of his requesting it. Like, pro tip to potential requesters, asking for something that's coming out sooner rather than later is always a plus for my side of things, you know? It means I don't have to keep an album in the back of my head for six months and constantly ask myself, shit, has that come out yet? Shit, has that come out yet? And so, points to Gene for punctuality, but will I be taking those points off immediately for a shitty album request? Therein lies the kicker. Having my pizza delivered early is a treat, but opening the box to find it full of dog shit and broken glass kind of negates the satisfaction, you know what I mean? Well, the band Gene requested was Code Orange. Wasn't immediately familiar, but there weren't a lot of warning signs or anything. Group from Pittsburgh, used to be hardcore punk, but switched to metalcore. Uh, we're not dealing with a T-Soul situation here, are we? I listened to their previous album, I Am King, and thought it was pretty good, actually. Wasn't it all what I was expecting from a band with hardcore punk roots, but on this album, I could tell precisely what kind of hardcore roots this band had. Specifically, that of the Converge style, the Black Flag style, but more specifically, that heavily experimental late period flag, like the B-side of My War. The times when flag would just slow things down to a crawl and scare the piss out of us with chugging, doom-filled harmonies, and Henry Rollins shrieking his lungs out, doing his best impression of a serial killer. That kind of black flag. That's kind of the era where these guys are coming from. And you know, I'll be damned if they aren't really, really good at capturing that. I was impressed by I Am King, and once Forever dropped, it turned out to be even better. The instrumentation just howls at you with a violent and ear-piercingly chaotic dissonance that leaves a spooky feeling in the pit of your stomach, but also leaves a pulsating urge to slam that feeling out of you in the middle of the motherfucking mosh pit, the way any good metalcore band does, you know? And the vocals on this thing are just so goddamn perfect in building that white knuckle tension and ferocious bile that, you know, this kind of music lives and breathes on. Vocal duties get kind of passed around a lot on this one, but I think the lion's share here is actually coming from drummer Jamie Morgan, and his guttural searing growls and shouts just cascade over the rest of the instrumentation like a geyser of blood falling over an open wound, and... Please understand, I do mean that as a compliment here. And the additional vocal work brought in by Reba Myers is also gripping, haunting, and deeply unsettling. Again, all in a good way. The album is going for a dark, brooding, painful, unsettling tone, and these guys are aces when it comes to establishing that mood. So many bands aim for that bar and fall so, so miserably underneath it, so it's always nice to find a band who not only meets, but rises above those expectations. Another thing I love is how this band actually mixes things up with their sound. Yeah, there's plenty of blah 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 breakdown, breakdown, breakdown on this thing. It just kind of comes with the territory for this particular genre of metalcore, you know. But I love that there are tracks on here like Bleeding in the Blur, Ugly, and Dream 2. These songs, for lack of a better descriptor, slow things down a bit. Well, they utilize a lot of clean vocals, more distinctive and more polished melodies, and Dream 2 even turns off the distortion entirely. Look, for a breakdown heavy metalcore act, that's a downright ballsy thing to do, but I promise you, it works. It breaks up the monotony that this particular kind of album can usually suffer from, and believe me, that's also an insanely hard thing to do in this genre. Again, big props. Really, this is an album that is exceptional for its genre. It's a great listen, and it just keeps growing on me the more and more I listen to it. Really, the only warnings I have here are if you're not the type that's into super dark, super morose, super heavy stuff, this probably won't be up your alley then. I mean, the cover alone should tell you this isn't exactly the sunshine train to Lollipop Lane. And if you're the kind of person who just thinks that a metalcore breakdown is a sin and travesty against our lord, then yeah, this album is pretty heretical to your dogma and you should probably avoid it. But you know what? For the kind of person who would be into this, this is an absolutely scrumptious morsel. And you know who the first people I would recommend an album like this to are? 
fans of bands like King 810, Immure, and Attila. See guys, this is how you fucking do it right. See King 810, you can be dark and edgy without being sociopathic. See Immure, you can be dark and edgy without being knuckle-draggingly stupid. See Attila, you can be dark and edgy without drinking your own body weight in salty cum. Watch and learn, boyos. Code Orange is doing this kind of thing properly. Forever gets four dun 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 out of five.